Hey everybody, Spencer here. Today I am talking about Peniel Saga. This is a little bit different for me on a couple of areas. One, don't do a lot of mobile game coverage on this channel. Not because I have anything against mobile games, I just normally am busier playing other types of games, but recently I had the opportunity to check out Peniel Saga before release and wanted to give some of my thoughts and impressions about the game and kind of let you all know about it. So by the time you are all seeing this video the game is now released on ios and android links will be in the description for you to check it out if you are interested but yeah just to kind of give you a little bit of a heads up about what is pineal saga Pineal Saga is a idle RPG mobile game, and I know that there are plenty of those to kind of choose from out there, but believe it or not, this is actually my first one ever, and it was definitely interesting for me. I didn't really know what to go into it expecting outside of pulling random heroes, RPG-like mechanics, leveling up equipment, and whatnot, and I wasn't really sure how much it would kind of sink its teeth into me, but with Pineal Saga, I was really surprised that it was just the kind of idle nature of picking it up, putting it down when I'm at my day job, and checking it as I'm on the go, which was definitely a lot more addicting than I really thought it would be. So some basic things to really know, there's over 70 different heroes in the game, and the nice thing about it is there are six different factions with six different classes, and there's three different roles, a bunch of different characters from different mythologies and places all over there. I thought the art was really, really nice for everything. Everything is animated really, really well. It has a really nice art style to it, and one of the biggest surprises for me in terms of presentation with this is everything is voiced in terms of all the story talking to the characters really nice you get a good bit of their personality without kind of drowning it out if you're interested in the story there's a world you can learn about there and sink your teeth into so really no matter what kind of warriors you're interested in the game has a lot of variety with it in terms of which ones you're going to be able to pull and unlock along with your journey you're on so there are three different kind of rarities so there's basically r which is your commons sr which is going to be rare and then your double srs which are going to be the best that you could find the elite so for me with my experience i had i really just kind of wanted to see what it was like starting off the game i had one ssr and a couple of srs as well as r's and i really just wanted to kind of see what the beginning experience was like you're going into battles you're finding different bosses and then you're leveling up your characters equipment enhancing items it's a really simple loop without feeling too simple or too autopilot your brain can kind of really put in as much or as little time as you want into it. And the battles on their own, I thought, were genuinely pretty fun. It was just to kind of make sure you're leveled up high enough to get through these sets of enemies. And if you're not, no real big punishment. You can just go try and level up your heroes more with the materials and money you need by collecting and playing through the game naturally. Battles were fast. You can speed it up. There are times too, and there's even an auto battle option. So if you really want to turn your brain off, again, it's very, very much leaning into the friendly, idle, pick up and play. And I kind of like that for a phone game of just... I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to play this. Is it going to be for 5 minutes? Is it going to be for 30 minutes? So it's really, really nice that also everything is progressing even when you are away from it. So even if I'm not playing the game, you're still collecting missions. You're still collecting gold. You're still collecting all these different ways to progress your character and just progress even when you're not doing anything. Which is honestly one of the nice things that kept me coming back just to see, oh hey, it's been this many hours. Let's see how much I've collected or what are the new daily quests and things like that. So even if it was just the collecting the heroes, finding the new equipment for them, changing my party, seeing what the daily quests are, that's really fun. But as I was progressing more and more, what I thought was interesting was the different types of game modes that there are. So even though it's always going to be auto battles, there are different kind of ways you can play. There are different like chessboard matches you can play. There is a full on town builder, which will let you basically make your own dream town change it however you want put different rooms together invite people over have different affinities with different heroes so that they're more friendly different mini games it was honestly a lot more than i was kind of expecting like it could have just been the collecting heroes making pulls every now and then in battles but 
I kind of wasn't expecting and was pleasantly surprised by the different mini games available as well as the different modes to check out. Whether I was thinking, hey, do I just want to do an auto battle or do I want to do something maybe like a 5v5 mode or do I want to just kind of build out my town, check out different more strategy focused maps or just see how high I can climb up in the tower and unlock different items if I can get past these challenges. The big takeaway for me, honestly, was just the fact that, hey, these idle RPGs, they're not meant to stress your brain, and that's kind of the point. There are so many other RPGs out there that are going to challenge you, stress you, do whatever. This is just something that you can play by yourself, have some fun with, invite some friends. All in all, a really, really nice kind of experience. I don't regret checking it out. I don't really feel like I wasted my time, even though it is kind of a time waster game to have on your phone. But for my first idle game, especially on mobile, I was really, really interested to play it. I'm still going to fiddle around with it more now that it's going to be on full release. At the end of the day, Pineal Saga was a welcomed surprise for my first idle RPG, especially as someone who does not play a lot of games on their phone. It's definitely one I can recommend to all of you out there if you've never played one before. If you play a lot of these type of games, definitely consider downloading it. It's free to play. Let me know what you think. How does it compare to other games out there on the market? Thank you so much once again for everybody checking out the video don't forget to check out the links below if you're interested in checking out the game following their socials and everything else out there so don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments below thank you all so much for watching and i'll talk to you later bye